Okay, <clears throat> we are going to talk about superheat and then the target superheat. Um, <clears throat> so we've done this calculation before, but we're going to do it one more time just to make sure we know what's going on here. But we want to take the superheat is the difference between the line temperature minus the saturation temperature I guess we should spell saturation right All right, and that being, um, I guess, pick some numbers here. I'll uh, say we got a temperature that's um, oh, line temperatures 48 degrees Fahrenheit, and our saturation temperature is 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So that would give us an 8 degree. Fahrenheit superheat. All right, well, that's all well and done, uh, or said. And the other place we want to check for this is we're going to go look at the data plate on the system we're playing with. And they're going to give us a target um, or a superheat that they'd prefer. Okay. Uh, data plate on the unit and in this case let's say we have 10 degrees Fahrenheit superheat listed okay then that's what we're going to match now if that's the case our measured superheat all right and I guess this is a better way to put this this is measured um, Okay, and this is the manufacturer superheat. Okay, um, and we'd be two degrees from the target. Okay, so we can add some refrigerant or we can make some adjustments to things here, but that's in essence how this actually works. Okay. All right, now I made those numbers up, so don't go looking those up trying to figure out which refrigerant it is. All right, now with target superheat, though, target superheat is all about what the system th thinks. Um, Actually, I'm going to put it down as system measurements. Okay. In that case, um, we're going to look at the outdoor dry bulb temperature. Okay. We're going to look at the indoor wet bulb wet temperature and let me get this chart moved down here a little bit we need uh, some more space we'll come back to this chart so don't panic all right and with those we're going to be able to um, understand what the system is. Now, the reason for this is sometimes the data plates are old and missing or the system is just so corrupted um, that you're really trying to figure out what's going on with it. 
So in that case, um, we're going to take these measurements. And I'm going to kind of explain a few things here about this. But the um, if we do this right, uh, hopefully you will get the gist of what we're trying to do with this. All right. So in order to do these few things, we're going to need to um, play with a sling psychometer. Be nice to spell today. Sling. Okay. And what it has on it is a dry bulb. Thermometer. And a wet bulb. Okay, and we're going to a use the dry bulb outside, um, and these things are basically um, think of it like at this. Here's a uh, bulb, and there's our thermometer, and then the other one is a bulb, and we got a th bulb at the bottom. But on this one, we now let's do it this way. We place a wick over top of all this. So basically a little white sock uh, that gets wet. Okay. And as the air passes across the dry bulb, that reads the sensible. Give myself some more room here. Sensible temperature. Okay. And as air passes across this one, this reads the latent temperature. And we will spend some time in lab playing with these devices. But what's happening here is as I pass air across this, I'm actually wicking away some water moisture. So I get all these little drops of water that will evaporate. If the room is highly um, has a high relative humidity, not much of this will evaporate. If it has a low relative humidity, then most of the water will evaporate off the uh, sock. Okay, and that adjusts our temperatures. Okay, that's enough for that. We'll have to have a whole special lecture just on psychometrics, but that's coming up soon. All right, now, so when we do this, we want to measure the outdoor ambient air. And we're going to take that reading uh, out, outdoors. And so this is going to be our sensible temperature outdoors. OK. Um, yeah, let's call it 80 degrees just for the fun of having a number to play with. OK. And then we're going to go indoors into the duck. All right. And this is going to be air temperature in the duck, but the wet bulb. OK. And let's make that one. Um, oh, let's make it 65 degrees. OK. All right, so if the space is dry on both sides, then you're going to get a big change in this. If the space is relatively moist, then there won't be much of a difference between these two. Okay, in this case, this is a reasonable amount of humidity inside the duct. But our whole purpose of using an air conditioning system is to remove moisture from the air. So we want to know how much it's actually removing. The only way to do it is actually to measure uh, what's actually going on there. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to give you the formula first, and then we'll just go play with the target uh, superheat chart because that'll make your life a little easier. But we might as well understand the formula. So um, target 
SH. Okay, and that's going to stand for target superheat. All right, and I've explained uh, the other ones here as oh no, I didn't. So dry bulb is going to be labeled DB, and wet bulb is going to be labeled WB. Okay. Pretty standard throughout the industry, so nobody's going to have any problems if you try to use those terms. So, target super heat is equal to 3 times the wet bulb, and that's on the inside. I'm going to bracket that, and then I'm going to bring another bracket around that. Minus 80 minus dry bulb and we're going to divide all that by 2 okay all right another way to write that just so some people don't like to see all those brackets so you still got to group those together minus 80 minus your dry bulb temperature all divided by 2 okay so if we take the examples that I used up here, 80 and 65, so we're going to go 3 times 65 minus 80 minus 80 degrees. Well, that worked out really cool. So, uh, calculator. Sorry, guys. I should have gotten that ready earlier. All right. Oh yeah, and as long as we're waiting for the calculator to get started, we got to divide that by 2. All right, we're going to go 3 times 65 minus 80 minus 80. So we have a target superheat of 35 degrees. <coughs> okay, so that's reasonably uh, um, impractical um, but it gives you an idea of the math okay um, wonder how I could have gotten that a little bit better uh, oh I didn't divide that by two not that's why it's not right <laughs> boy having one of those moments all right so 17.5 That's our target super heat based on our dry bulb temperature and our wet bulb temperature. Okay. Normally we're looking for um, 15 degrees. That's not bad. Okay. It uh, could be worse. All right. So again, this is just measuring things on the units, and I'll try and set this up for you in the lab. So. You'll get a chance to do it. Now let's take a look at our chart here and we'll use the same numbers and see how close we come. Uh, actually, let's slide this this way and maybe make it just a bit bigger. There we go. All right, so indoor wet bulb, and I'm going to change to uh green i think okay so we're 65 so 60 62 64 66 so we are literally going to be someplace down this line here all right and we're going to have to play with this but we had 80 degrees outdoor so we're pretty much on this line here okay and if you look in between these two we're going to be 14 if it's 64 that's our wet bulb and our TSH is that and we actually had 65 and then our other one is 66 and that's 18 so we're literally trying to find that one in there and you could call it 16 
there's some math to be done with this. Um, we'll forgo that. Um, but if you're looking between 64 and 66, and we were t our wet bulb was 65, it would be easy to say that that's a two degree change on that one and call it uh, 16. So these two numbers here are reasonably close. Okay. But that's how you use the chart. So there's nothing exactly precise about using the chart. Um, the equation's always better, but the chart's more used in the field. So just might as well get used to it. Okay. All right. So let's do one more example here. Um, and then see um, what we're actually doing here. Oh, yeah. Another thing I want to do is just give you, there is an error based on this chart. It's actually plus minus two degrees Fahrenheit. So there's nothing that precise about it, um, but it works. I mean, we did the equation, we did the chart. Cool. All right, let's do another one here. Um, let's do this example here. All right, we are looking at um, we're going to do this one. So example two, we have um, this statement, find the, no, not total, target superheat. Find the target superheat when outside air dB is 92 degrees Fahrenheit and indoor air and I guess if I'm being consistent here I'll do this indoor air wet bulb is 68 degrees okay all right <clears throat> so using the equation we are going to get um, target superheat is equal to 3 times 68 degrees Fahrenheit minus 80 minus 92 all divided by 2 and we will get 32 degrees Fahrenheit minus divided by 2 and that gives us a target superheat of 16 degrees Fahrenheit so we can live with that one okay and if we go back and take a look at the chart on this one um, I think this one will actually work so 68 all right so I'm going to use um, red this time so 68 we're down this column and we're 92, so we're someplace in about there. So in this particular case, I'd say 16 is close enough off that chart. Okay. All right. Keep that in mind. Um, we'll talk a little bit more when to use this, but ideally, let's go back and remember that your target superheat should come off the data plate first. There are times where the data plates don't exist and you need to actually measure what's going on in the system at that time. So one of those two situations will lead you to doing target superheat and then checking your 
superheat measurements and going from there. Okay, so that's the end of this video and I'll get it posted for you. Um, come on, and we're going to stop.